Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second session of the day. It's got a bit lively here today. Day two's looking a little bit good. It's rocking. Um, welcome to the uh, Taste the Trends Theatre or Kitchen. Come and sit down, you. Come on. Welcome to the Eats Meets West uh, demo. I've got quite a busy little stage coming on here, so I'm going to grab... Do I want to grab one and two... Yeah, three, four. I tell you what, we'll grab, we'll leave you there for a minute. We'll do this one, then we'll bring you up there. That would be easier. Right, so just to let you know, my name's Stephen Walpole. I am your uh, host, compere, chef. Um, so the idea of this theatre and what we've been doing for the last couple of days is to really showcase uh, a lot of what we do in regards of produce and people. You come to speciality because you've just got some really amazing products and some amazing if you like, stories. So I think sometimes the stories can always get a little bit lost. So what I'm going to try and do, along with Dan Moon, who is the ambassador for Foy Royale, uh, Rick, we're going to just uh, give you a little insight and a little understanding of how Eats Meets West. So at the moment, in regards of food trends and what's going on, there's quite a big steer towards Japanese, Korean, Asian, which really sort of come alive a little bit. So Luckily for me, we've got some wonderful products from around different parts of the world. So we're going to be doing a little spring roll dish using the uh, Fire Royale, which Leith is going to talk about. Dan's going to quietly make. Dan can talk. He just is quite happy being mute today, aren't you, Dan? Yeah. So we've got a nice little spring roll dish. So he's going to talk about how you know, we've, we've taken sort of Western things and we've then mixed it with the spring rolls. But what I have got, because it's a wonderful product, is we've got a lovely little... Uh, lime and mango dip very spicy very hot so what i thought we would do is we do a nice little sort of starter style product something really simple for a canopy sort of idea and then we're going to go into a more korean dish so i'm going to tell you a nice little bulgogi with some kimchi rice and things because a lot of you know a lot about japanese cuisine and things like that but with korean it's very very different and you can't mix the two they really have to be different their, their ingredients are, are similar in name but they are completely different in regards to products We've also got some Thai ingredients as well. So what I've done is I've tried to take some normal products and be a bit inventive. So we've just done a demo where we had turmeric paste, we had mead, and we had um, kvass, which is like a fermented beer. So we made beer noodles to go in the pho because we had a nice broth to go with it. We've then uh, poached peaches in the mead. We made a, tum a turmeric and yogurt panna cotta because, again, learning how to use something simple like turmeric, using something simple like it's the dip and making something special with it is a real difference. So I'm going to talk briefly about uh, a product called Four Right Fire, the pate. Foie, I know. Unfortunately, I'm from Essex, so my, my pronunciation of certain French words, and please don't get me started on the correct pronunciation of the Korean words, because I do get that a little bit wrong, but my lovely friend, she's already laughing, look, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, it, I, I tried to think what I'm actually saying, what I think I'm saying, what I'm actually saying are different things. So there's going to be some technical terms on different things. I'm going to get these people to just explain it, because there's absolutely no point in me standing up here trying to pretend I'm an expert when they are the experts there. So I'm going to hand you over briefly to Leith. Leith, he's going to talk about the Foire Royale and a little bit about you know, the ethical side of duck stuff. Because obviously from an oriental perspective, duck is a really you know, popular product. It's used a lot in different ways. But for me, this Foire Royale really brings a different dimension to things like spring rolls. Yesterday, we did it with a chocolate uh, and foie, foie tart, didn't we? We did a sort of seared with ginger, apple. We used some lovely honey from a lady over there. And it was lemon and ginger so you had that influence again of sort of those oriental flavors so it's really just about bringing it to life so Leith go on go for it yeah you on you on sound man thank you is it click one two one two one two I think that's on just quiet one yeah. hey okay Good morning, everybody. My name's Leif. I'm from Foire Royale, uh, which the product that Dan's using is an ethical alternative to foie gras. Uh, huh? Kind of sounds a bit unusual. How can yeah. it be can I ethical? The, there, uh, the, the product is made as a, as a byproduct of meat production. So our farmers um, 
are very large producers of duck and geese. We take the normal liver of a duck or goose after its life, about that big, with the fat, and we've created a process to enrich the liver after the bird's life, not during it, which uh, is much a nicer way to treat animals. Um, the product is sold directly to restaurants, chefs, hotels, distributors, and so on. You can buy it in Waitrose, in Fortnum and Mason. And today, Dan is making a spring roll with a duck leg confit, which is about a five hour cook. And he has just grated some foie royale, which is a cooked product, but it can be uh, seared as well and cooked as if it's a, a natural raw product, which is not. Uh, so Dan is gonna do some There's spring rolls oh, with fine, duck foie royale melting through it. And then we're gonna use the lime and mango dip. And Steve has disappeared, so crack on. I'm putting your teriyaki in if you want to come over. I've got it, I've got it, just come over. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I'm missing a supplier, she's gone missing, apologies. So, you talked about the, uh, the spring roll mix, yeah? So obviously this is about Eats Meets West, what I want to introduce you to is a lovely lady there who runs a company called Nojo. Or you changed your name, why are you now? Nojo, right? Can't turn the microphone for 30 seconds? Come up here. So, this lady I met a few years ago at the, uh, the speciality show, and she's, well, I'll let you explain what you do and what you make. But they're lovely little Japanese sort of oriental fusion dressings. That's right. So I introduce yourself, do a quick chat, and then we pass over to you. Sure. Go, go on, talk. What do I do? You just talk about Nojo, talk okay, about your hi. company, that's what so, you were here for. I'm not so good with the microphone, but um, Nojo done, yeah? is a Japanese-inspired dressing. So originally started from Camden Market. We used to have a store there, then a catering company, and then we started as a retail business. So we are stocked in Selfridges, Harrods, Whole Foods Market, and Amazon, and going to be launched in Coop soon. And we just launched also our plant-based mayos with partnership with Holy Carrot Restaurant. So it's a plant-based nice. restaurant in Knightsbridge, and they are the most delicious mayos in the world. Uh, it's been a long process of trial and error, but eventually we, you can come to the store and try them with our crudités. We have spicy Caesar and um, cool classic. Yeah, the Caesar is absolutely outstanding for a vegan dressing, it's amazing. But I wanted to showcase the fact that because it's Eats Meets West, we're doing a spring roll here, which obviously everyone sort of knows. We're putting the teriyaki inside because it's got that nice sort of sweet, savory, that umami flavor. And then it's obviously just going to bring that duck and that foie because you've got the creaminess in the foie, you've got the duck in there as well. So yeah, you're done now. You Thank can go you. if you want. Um, but no spring roll would ever be good without some sort of dipping sauce. So I could have gone sweet chili. We could have gone a number of different routes, but... I've met this wonderful lady here. She's a little bit shy. Oh, you don't like talking much. Um, but she's made this absolutely knockout mango and lime dip. Now, the great thing about it is it's, it's not massively sweet, but it's got a kick. And her exact words were, I was being a bit of a girl because it was a little bit too hot for me, wasn't it? Look, okay, so yes, I realized that this show's just about me hamming myself up or generally just getting ridiculed because of my flavor profiles. But I want to hand you over to... Dave, I can't remember people's names, I'm rubbish, it's always going to be, Esma, and she's going to talk a little bit about your stand, your product, what you do, and the whole Caribbean and the fusion side, because I think it's absolutely outstanding. Hi, good day, I'm Hesma Tyson. Oh, hi, I'm Hesma Tyson. I am the owner of Caribel Foods. We are Caribbean inspired. We are located in Trinidad and Tobago. We are actually in the absolute Caribbean pavilion. So we have a whole range of hot sauces and dips, all naturally made. No artificial coloring, preservative flavors. So when you see lime and mango, there are chunks of mango in here. The dips is, this particular dip, I believe, is absolutely gorgeous for what he's doing here. But it can be used for a multitude of things like burgers, be it vegan, fish, or beef. Yeah. I know you're on the ethical thing, but I had to mention that. No, part. no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> But again, the whole point of this 
these demos, this theatre, what we're trying to do is to say to people, it isn't just a one-dimensional product. Same with the foie, same with everything we do, same with the kitchen. I'm going to be really clever, hopefully, hopefully, with the Korean and the Thai bits in a bit. True. But it's, it's about understanding, because you get a product, and if you don't know what to do with it and how to make it shine and sing. But what I loved about it was, yes, it's Caribbean, but the flavour profile worked so well with bringing a little bit of the, you know, sort of... Yes, Because at the moment... Jamaican food, Caribbean food is massive in the UK. It's starting to be the next wave in trend in regards of that. And so if you are looking at, you know, the, the classics, you sort of know the jerk chickens and things like that. But there are some really good little pop-ups, especially now in this sort of fine casual dining or in this, like the food trucks and in the whole sort of yes, yeah, delivery true. route. You know, it's great. So suddenly seeing this, it is absolutely yeah. knockout. So is it your recipe? How did you come about? What's oh, this recipe came about after three years of... After three years of trial and error, much three failure. Three years, wow. Three years, I had to keep going back. Sometimes the lime will overpower, sometimes the mango will overpower, and then I'll get vexed and I'll just put it down. And then in 2018, 2019, I cracked the code, as I said. And it's one of the favorites in my country. Right? It's one of the favorites. Yes, cool. Um, I had to get you in early because you actually have to go off. You're doing a pitch somewhere. Oh, you take your time now. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm no, sorting I'm out. I'm take an extra 15 oh, minutes. Good Lord. <laughs> you were a diva this morning. Now suddenly you're all right about it. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But again, so sorry, like you said. Again, the whole reason for, for doing this is I like to get to know the people. I like yeah. to understand it. Like they give me the products. And like when you meet the lady from Nojo and her dressings, you've got the lovely Korean, the Thai people, that, you know, Leif and Dan, like seeing what they do, see the passion you've got behind a product and what you do. And honestly, even if you just go down to the Caribbean section just for a chat, wow. they are just amazing. Like the, their enthusiasm for what they do is just superb. Yes, so uh, yes, yeah, if you need that. to shoot off, you can shoot off. I need that because we need to do a nice little, uh, put in a little dip and do some stuff with it. Right. So can I move you two off? Is that all right? And now my next lot, I feel like I'm speed dating, ladies and gentlemen. It's a bit weird for me. Right, I'm now going to get up uh, Huey, Dewey and Louie. I can never remember names. <laughs> come on, up you come. Four seats. Or three seats. We're four seats. You can come up as well. So, here they come. Right. Have you put the soy, so this stuff in, yeah? Right, that's it. Set a little display up. We like you a lot for your little displays. Oh, you've got it there? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Just half a dozen. That's cool. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. Sure? Yeah, you're done. Yeah. Because then he's in the camera cook and you can just do that. We present it, people can taste it. Happy days. Right. Oh, no, you can't call me John. That's terrible. That's not the name I usually get called. I won't tell you what that is. It's not Chef. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, we're just finishing the sort of the Japanese Eats Meets West fusion dish now. Dan's done some lovely spring rolls there. So, the spring roll paste and stuff is just a general product you can get in most places. But I'm going to go round because, where is it? Where's my little crackling? I'm going to start you off with this gentleman. Because yesterday, we did a wonderful uh, honey salmon dish uh, with some kimchi rice and some other bits and bobs. But what I did was, I garnished it with a salmon skin crackling. Now, if there's one thing that I've found from this show is that you find something new. We're all used to pork crackling, we're all used to other sorts of crackling, now chicken skin crackling, crisps, all sorts of things like this. But chow chow, is that correct? Choo choo, chow. I told you I'm, I'm just terrible. I, thank you, yeah. They're getting me back because I called them like Dave, Trevor and everyone else yesterday. So now they're referring to me as John. So uh, yeah, it's quite good. But it isn't just about the spices, it isn't just about the bases, it isn't just about things like that you then find something that really is quite special. And it's these, the salmon skin crackling. So, Bobby. Oh, you're Bobby, that's right, you've got a great name. Bobby, I love Bobby. 
I can't forget Bobby's name, Bobby. Yeah. So Bobby's into eight. He's over there in the corner. His little friend is uh, busy working while you're taking yeah. it easy, sitting here enjoying yourself. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to talk about these and we can pass yeah. some around for people to try, is that uh, good? Not this one, this one's already open. Oh, okay. Go on then, you, uh, we'll do another one. Hi, uh, morning everyone, my name is Bobby. Um, as Stephen was uh, saying, I am um, from Choo Choo, that's, that's just that down the end of this uh, aisle. Okay. So yeah, um, fish crackling uh, is very popular in South Asia. And uh, we hardly find any fish crackling in this country. So a few years ago, partner and myself um, decided to manufacture in here because we find it very difficult to import them from Asia. Um, so this item, we are trying to present it to restaurants, chefs, uh, people who like to cook um, with a little bit of fusion ideas because there's a lot of opportunities, a, a lot, lot of um, combinations by using the salmon crackling. Uh, for example, you can go with the you can go as a snack, uh, you can go with your beer, uh, it will go well with your any of the dishes. So um, it is very hard to explain what it tastes like if you never tasted it before. So I would suggest uh, if I anyone is interested, come into our booth and take a, away with take a test and see what you think, what you can make it use it for. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm right behind you. So, yeah, please go and have a try because it's sensational because it's not got a huge uh, over-seasoned flavour. It's, it's a very natural flavour, but I really like the crisp. And for me, it gives another dimension to, for instance, my garnishes. So if I wanted to do something different in regards of a canapé, so for instance, you could break a piece off, you know, put a little prawn mix or something on there, have it as a canopy or as a little snack. We can use it as a garnish to go on a fish dish. It's just really, you know, a nice product and it's really, really simple. I'm then going to pass you over now to the lady in the middle. I think next year what I'm going to do is we'll just get big name badges. <laughs> I love my job. Right, I just need to wipe up. Anyway. So I'm going to meet Zuzi Dikita. She's got a company called... Uh, 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 oh, God. Naka, yeah, that's it. Say again loudly. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, Nakasero. Right? So they make bases and... Uh, oh, okay, it's all there. I'll just shush now then. So pickled vegetables, you've got some stuff. So Gita, can you just explain a little bit about your company and what you're doing, then I'll explain what I'm using in my bowl goggy, which brings me to you in a second. Okay, hi, I'm Gita from Nakasero Foods, and we have a range of condiments, pickles, and chili nice. oils, all vegan accredited. And it's a quite a diverse range of products, but they're clean products. So if anyone's looking Good. for something that's additive-free, preservative-free, and actually quite authentic, then we have an amazing range. We're in stand 2667. But all our products are, they inspire people to cook, and they inspire people to experiment. And now? we've truly now? embraced food fusion. We find that the world actually wants to experiment and play with flavors Slow and that's exactly what we've done we've What's done the hard work already? for you What's so that? you can actually experiment and enjoy oh, no, food I kim kimchi in there. and i think kimchi in there. paul or mark or sorry no, stuart <laughs> <laughs> so i'm using their sweet chili jam because what i'm making is a bulgogi correct bulgogi. bulgogi yeah so if you don't know bulgogi for me is like the korean barbecue flavor is it not it's, but it's a sweet and sort of spicy sauce so this chili jam made a great sort of additive to it because it's got the uh, the gochu chili. The chili jam doesn't. The, uh, in, oh. in, the, in, the, uh, in our Korean oil, we have gochugaru, which are the Gochu, Korean chili it. flakes. The yes. uh, marmalata, the chili jam, was something that Stuart really liked because we have carrot, celery, onion, all the stocky vegetables in there, which gives you a real full-bodied flavor. Okay. And you really like that. Yeah, no, it's really good. So I'm going to hand you over now then to... My friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Steve. Hi. So, name was, let me, <laughs> let me get your name right. I've got to get it right. Juan. Juan. There we are. This is Juan. She is from the, uh, how do you call yourself, Korean trade? Um, I'm working for uh, Korean agro food, uh, agro fisheries and food trade yeah. corporation, which is a public Probably. agency of South Korea. And our European office sure, is based in now. Paris, and we are here to present 
Korean products. Yes, and what great products they are. So yesterday I had great fun when we, we played around. We did a gochujang chicken because it was a really nice thing. We used your paste, used the bean paste, but we did this kimchi thing because I've been enlightened a little bit about kimchi because there is some lovely little tinned kimchi. So if you're, if you're wanting to understand kimchi a little bit and what it is and how it's made, the tinned version is pretty good because it's probably for me, it's like a starter. It's a cupboard essential. You have it there because you can always use it. It's very, very good. You can get some really good fresh ones as well, can't you? But the other thing I liked about it was that they also do a kimchi seasoning. So if you've got the kimchi is too much because it's a fermented vegetable, it's always good for gut health, it's got all this one of the... It's funny because in Korean cooking, if I'm right, it's used in quite a lot of things as a cold product, as a hot product, it's used quite a lot as a seasoning item. And I was fascinated to see you know, how many different types it is and, and what it's got and how it goes. But for some people, it's a little bit strong. So the way to get around that is if you look at the, the seasoning that you've got, it can give you all of those sort of flavors, but without necessarily like the, the concentrated version of it. But the one product that I really love, this has become my new favorite product of the show. It's a magic box that I can't open. It's a dehydrated kimchi. Like that. And it's like, a, it's like all light fluffy. So it's been dehydrated, dried. What I found is it's a really good snack, although you do look a bit weird eating this and it does get on your fingers and everything else. But as a dry product, it's really good because once you eat it and you start to get the, the moisture comes into your mouth, you get all those flavors come through and it really builds. You can hydrate it and then you can use it in cookery and it will actually then become soft. But I'm gonna show you a little trick at the end of the day, what we do with it, what we did yesterday, which is a great way of using it as a seasoning on top. So you could use sort of this, or we've got this. The other product we're doing today, so a bulgogi, can you just explain what bulgogi sauces are, bulgogi in regards of Korean, because I'm obviously not doing it any justice and I'm rather worried that we're just gonna keep ruining it. Cool, can you explain what it is and I'll talk about what I put in it. Okay, in fact, bulgogi means in Korea, uh, meat on fire. So when uh, my friend Steve told me that he will do bulgogi vegetables, <laughs> I asked him, oh, so there will be meat? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I said to him, but bulgogi means uh, meat on fire. Oh, no, there will be just sauce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we changed it now. So we changed it. We've done a chicken version. Okay. But... <laughs> because I, I didn't want to be too embarrassed and I can't stand up here trying to make out that I could make all these papers, products, sing without doing it. But we've got the chili jam in there, but the product I wanted to really talk about, because it's, it's a sweet and it's a hot, spicy, it's a sticky sort of, thing, and it's, it's beautiful. Bulgogi is just beautiful. But you've got this product and it's called, yeah, perfect. It's called, oh, let me get this pronunciation right. Is it a chong? What? You uh, uh. I'll let you explain it. So basically, it's like a uh, it's like a marmalade type product, isn't it? It's the easy way to say it. But it brings that sweetness and it brings a different side to it. So you've got a sweet chili jam and you've got this. So instead of using classically like lots of sugar and lots of sweet chili, uh, you know, we're using lots of different products. But it's going to give a different dimension because it's got that citrusy note, and it's just it's just wonderful. And again, like for me, it's really good to come to a place like this and meet people like you and say, I'm thinking about doing this. And they either go, that's a really good idea, or you get the, uh, oh my life, what are you doing, chef? But suddenly, you're being very clever. The other products I love, is this you, isn't it? Is this you? Soju. Soju. I have to say it like that, it makes it It's a wonderful product. It's a uh, alcohol-flavored, um, you know, like a wine, a sauce, yeah? yeah. They do three different flavors. They do peach, they do apple, and they do grape. I went through the apple one. I, 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 I told everybody I spilled it. I actually didn't. I drank quite a lot of it. It's very strong, but it's beautiful. But what is it? I'm terrible, see it? I'm gonna have to do a non-drinking one, I think, next year. I'm terrible. But this then brings that alcohol element. So if you think about sake and that sort of harshness of that flavor, but this is a little bit sweet, but it gives the alcohol element. So in this bulgogi, we've got, wherever he's gone, We've got the sweet chili, we've got the citrus uh, chong, we've got the soja, and then you've got some soy and stuff in there as well. So we've made a lovely little sticky uh, chicken. Where is it? 
So basically what you've done is we cooked some chicken legs down. We've then put all those sauces together and you just brought them to a boil and you reduced it down to like a nice sticky glaze. And it just is superb. And so to go with that, what we've done is we've done a little bit of kimchi rice. So you take the kimchi and then you just chop it up nice and fine. We cook some jasmine rice, but we stir fry the rice because classically you would stir fry quite a lot of rice. So again, if you are going to do these dishes, you do make sure that you're using the right techniques and you're giving it the right thing because it's the whole purpose. It's, I, I cannot explain and you know, emphasize that if you're going to do something and it's an ethnic dish or it's of a certain authenticity, do try to use the right ingredients. You really shouldn't really try to, to mix it. So it's uh, you know, a really good way to do it. Um, where's that dip? Cool. Oh, they're taking a bit. Oh, food styling again. She's back, ladies and gentlemen, my friend from, yeah. Do you want a spring roll? you want to try it? Got to try it in this dip. Okay. Are you leaving me to this, eh, chef here? Are you leaving me to this, eh? Yeah. Ah, okay, right. So, where's my little round molds? So I should have been prepared. Too much wine at the function last night. Right. So, I'm going to make it a little bit good. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, if you want to try some of the spring rolls, my lovely friend over there is already munching them. So I'd like Dan, give Dan a nice round of applause for the spring rolls and for doing the dip for me. Please go and see the Foie Royale people. I, I cannot, for an ethical product and the time and the energy that's gone into making that product is absolutely superb. Right, meanwhile, I digress. So, what we've done is we've added the kimchi, we've added a little bit of the bulgogi sauce just to go through. I learned my lesson from yesterday. Metal moulds are really good, but they obviously get very hot. And yesterday I was making some really awful noises trying to get it into a mould. Right. Hopefully I won't shake too much today. So you get your rice, put it into a mould. Tip it out, just aesthetically looks all right. You know what, I'm gonna burn myself, it's easier. See the pain I put myself through for your wonderful products, people. <laughs> oh. Okay. Also, just to let you know, we are sponsored by a lovely company called Dale Brook. All of these plates are all made of melamine. So they aren't made of, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, crockery or stone or anything else. They're light as a feather and they're really, really good and really cheap. But they look really good for style. Can I have a pair of tongs or a spatula? So, you've got your kimchi rice. We're then gonna now make it look a bit chefy and stick the barbecue glaze. Bulgogi chicken, because it means meat on fire as I've just found out now. Yes. See, I'm a genius. See, I know all these things. Huh? <laughs> Trust you. Just take some of the glaze and just spread it on. I mean, look at the color of that because you've got that lovely, all those sort of caramels and stuff. You've got the, the chung, you've got the sweet chili jam. You've got all the other bits in there. It just looks superb. Then we've just then lightly sauteed some vegetables, or rather Rick has. And he's going to get me a spoon to be able to put it on the plate. So again, just lightly stir fried. I've just realized I've done them back to front. And then what we're going to do, another fabulous product, which I'm just going to mention now, and you're going to talk about it, is my tofu sticks. Who's got the microphone? Microphone. There. So... Again, looking at a different dimension to your dish, these are just superb. They do like a prawn flavor, prawn flavor and a, sea, a seaweed flavor. So what it's gonna do is, they are basically just, well you talk about it, you can explain what this is. Thank you, Stephen. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick from Magic View Thailand. Um, time, yeah? We bring a lot of well um, staple Thai dish to this prayer. 
including um, the product that Steven is now using for the demonstration, um, the tofu stick. So as you know that tofu is um, one of the staple, staple ingredient and dish for um, Asian, Asian culture and um, Southeast Asian and of course East Asian culture. And we don't get enough of it, so we're making it into um, snacks. Um, this um, tofu stick comes into flavor, seaweed flavor and tom yum, Thai tom yum flavor. And um, hmm? as you, <laughs> and we Some know that um, prawn. So, um, oh, tofu prawn, is an incredible right. source of protein for, for us, and as well as um, isoflavonoid. So um, it's, um, it's a very good alternative um, snack. Yeah, I, I loved it as a snack because it was something different. And again, you know, you don't really hear about it like a tofu snack was amazing. But again, I used it as a garnish and I'm going to use it now. So I'm going to do two things. So the first thing we're going to do is, as I said to you, we've got our dehydrated kimchi. So all we're going to do is we just... Rub that on the top. Just to give a nice little bit of color, just to lift and elevate that dish. And then just to finish off, because I love textures. And in a lot of Asian cuisine, it's always about textures. So you have your crispy salmon skin. You have your things you crunch. You know, you've got your kimchi. You've got the different things. It's just really good. And then you just garnish with a little bit of that on the top. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've got Korean bulgogi uh, chicken with kimchi rice grated <laughs> kimchi and the, uh, the, the tofu sticks. Thank you very much. Thank you to you guys. If you've got any questions, please come and see them.